Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, we have planned to have this webinar for one hour of time. Uh, depending upon the amount of questions, it could run over if you wish, but it is strictly up to yourselves. We want to be respectful of your time. So my name is Greg Pearson. Uh, my wife and I are the owners of TravelX International, and I'm very proud to say that in 2022, TravelX International is celebrating their 30th anniversary in business. Uh, what we're going to present to you today is a custom Italian wine tour that is going to be hosted by Jim and Pat Bryant and will be escorted by Greg and Ursula Pearson. Uh, this has been a production that we have been doing now with Jim and Pat for almost 18 years. Uh, some of our tours have been strictly land-based. Some of the tours have been a combination of cruising and land base. This will be solely on land. Uh, as the slide is showing you, we are looking to do three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back tours, starting September 24 for Tuscany for seven days, six nights, going to Lake Como for four days, three nights, and then ending in Piemonte for seven days, six nights, and ending up on October 9. Uh, the goal right now is to share with you the opportunity that you can join us on one tour, two tours, or all three of the tours. That is your option. Each one of the tours has five-star accommodations, many of the very best vineyards and top restaurants in all of Italy are gonna be in each one of these tours at this time. So Kim, do you wanna to go to your wine map? So to give you a perspective, uh, we are going to begin in Tuscany. We'll be coming into the country more than likely in Rome. Uh, we are gonna be staying at a property that is just north of Siena. And we're gonna be enjoying much of what Tuscany has to offer from the Chianti area to Bulgari to Brunello and Multiciano. Multi, multi so this is gonna be a rich experience within Tuscany. From there, we are gonna go north up to Lake Como and we're gonna be enjoying really four days and three nights of just relaxation for everybody. It's kind of that intermezzo between the tours. And after Lake Como, we are then going into the Piedmont region <laughs> right around the time of White Truffle Festival, as well as some of the best wines of Brunello, as well as Barbaresco, and some of the whites, the Arnez, as well as the Gavis. So we're trying to have a, a blend of both food and wine all the way through on these tours. So Kim, if you want to go to the next. Whoopsie, sorry. So okay. this is a, a picture of Tuscany in its true sense. A lot of the cypress trees. Uh, this is right around the, the uh, property of Ornelia, which we're going to be uh, enjoying. Uh, but I wanted to take you through very briefly as an outline of the tour uh, and give you a perspective. Uh, first and foremost, we're gonna be staying at a hotel called Castel Monastero, one of the top virtuoso properties in Tuscany itself. Uh, we're going to be enjoying wine tastings at Felsina. We're gonna have dinners on property. We're gonna to be touring a bit of Florence in the Academia in terms of art history, as well as the culture of Florence. Uh, we're gonna go to, in my opinion, one of the top restaurants in all of Tuscany, known for their Florentine steaks in the town of Panzano, which is in the valley right across from Fantodi. Some of you may know of what I'm talking about, some may not, but it is a rich experience of what the Chianti area is known for, from Chianti Classicos, the Chianti Classical Reserves, as well as the Super Tuscan, 
uh, such as Flaschinello by Fantori. All of this will be enjoyed. We're going to be enjoying the vineyard of Fantori as well as we're going to be at the Castello di Verasano for both tastings as well as lunch at the Castello. Uh, Jim Bryant, who many on this call may know, Jim is a personal friend of the owner of the Castello and he has hosted us and, and really gave us a, a wonderful experience along the lines of about a three hour lunch the last time we were there. And I have a funny feeling it's gonna be repeated this time around. While we're in, in Tuscany itself, we're gonna go all the way to the coastline to Bulgari. And we're gonna be visiting one of the top properties, Ornalaya. And we will also be enjoying a fabulous lunch on property after the tasting. And not to be outdone on the same day, we will literally go two kilometers down the road to Antonori's Guadalcaso, and we will have a private tasting and enjoy much of what they have to offer. It's gonna be a fabulous experience for that. Uh, the following day, we are gonna be going to the Antonori estate and enjoying tastings of Tigonello, as well as lunch on property. We're gonna be tastings at the Monsanto Winery and then a wonderful dinner with the group at a local restaurant close to the hotel where we're staying. And then the last day before we depart Tuscany, we're gonna be going to Montalcino for enjoying a lot of the Brunellos. Uh, one of my favorite is Colabatoni. Uh, we're gonna be also at uh, Chiachi Piccolomini and we'll be having a lunch at Coli San Angelo Weather permitting, we're gonna be outside. It's gonna be a wonderful time of year to be there. All of this is gonna be really the last week in September. So it'll be nice warm days and still warm evenings as we're there. The next day we are gonna be departing and we're gonna be going to Lake Como, but we're gonna be stopping very close to Modena for lunch on the way there. And as we work our way to the Lake District, I don't know if anybody has been to Lake Como in the northern part of Italy, but you have uh, Lake Orta, you have Lake Maggiore, you have Lake Como, you have Lake Garda. And these lakes are as pristine in the mountain region as you can imagine. Where we're gonna be staying is going to be at the Grand Hotel Tremezzo in Lake Como. And that is going to be uh, one of the biggest treats, I believe, because it is considered and ranked the number one hotel in Europe in 2021. So our plan is to work our way, check in at the hotel. We have a dinner planned on that evening at the hotel. And we have another dinner planned the following day, but we have nothing planned during the days of when we arrive the following day or the following two days. We wanted to give you as much downtime to enjoy the property, the region, the area, and everything it has to offer. After Lake Como, we are going to be then going to Piemonte. And we are going to work our way up through the southern part of the region of Piemonte at the first vineyard called Villa Sparina. Some of you may be familiar with Gavi white wines, which are fabulous. We're going to have our first tasting in Piemonte at that property, as well as an antipasto lunch. Uh, we're going to be checking into our our accommodation of a five-star hotel called Casa de Langa. And a little bit later in this presentation, you'll see pictures of all of these properties in just a few moments. The second full day, once we're there in Piemonte, we're gonna be spending the time in Babaresco and we're gonna be visiting the likes of family-owned properties of Paitin, Bruno Rocca, Marchese di Greci. Uh, these will be for tastings 
We have wonderful lunches planned at Antica Torre and a special dinner at a one Michelin star restaurant called Le Chao del Torrevento. We've been there before. It is a fabulous place. Uh, the next day is gonna be in Barolo. That'll be our first experience in Barolo. And we're starting out at a high point visiting Gaia. It's a hard uh, visit to get into. We've been able to open up the, the winery for this visit for our group. Uh, besides Gaia, we're gonna be going to Cordero di Montezemolo and as well as Mario Velia. All of these properties are personal friends of Jim and he has been instrumental in opening this up for the group. Uh, dinner that night is gonna be a special dinner. We're gonna be going to the Marchese di Barolo and we're gonna have dinner in their private kitchen, if you will, on property. And that is an experience not to be missed. The next day after we'll be staying in Barolo, we're gonna be going to a couple of different properties. Uh, Gidi Vaira and Elvio Cogno, uh, two top Barolo properties. Probably you haven't heard of them, but the production is very high quality. And uh, they are a small producer and it's difficult to get into and we were able to open this up for the group. We're gonna have lunch at the Bovio restaurant, which is a top one in the region. And then we're gonna give you some downtime to really enjoy the hotel and do nothing slowly for that evening. Good. On the next day, we're gonna be going and visiting Pablo Scavino and Domenico Clerico, having lunch at one of my favorite restaurants, La Posta, and then having a dinner in Babaresco at the Osteria Capabac. Again, some of these you may not have heard of, but they are fabulous properties to wine taste and fabulous properties to enjoy top food in Italy. And then our last day is gonna be visiting Vietti and an Alba for some of the white truffles. We're gonna be at the La Piola restaurant, but then our grand finale dinner is gonna be at the Felicine, which is rated one of the top restaurants, if not the top restaurant right now in Italy. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the backdrop of the Alps from the terrace of the restaurant. And then as all good things must come to an end, we will bid you adieu. On the next day, we will then take you to Malpensa Airport in Milan for the departure home or set you in the direction of where you're gonna go next as you continue on your stay in Europe. So all in all, we have an opportunity for everybody to enjoy one of these tours, two of these tours, or all three of these tours. It is your call. We encourage you to take advantage of all of it, but we also understand that some people are enjoying other parts of Europe, either before or after our tours, and are trying to match up their travel plans accordingly. We have top hotels, top wineries, and it is virtually an all-inclusive trip with the exception of a few days of lunches and dinners to give you some downtime. So Kim, I'm gonna have you stop right here and maybe play the quick video and we can take a quick look at what we're talking about. Um, has everyone been watching the video the whole time, I think? Mm -hmm. I've only seen the still picture of Tuscany. Okay. All righty. Sorry, I've been watching the video the whole time. So <laughs> hold on a second here. Mm -hmm. what, what is that a picture of right there? Are we staying there? That is the Casa de Langa in Piemonte where we'd be staying. Tell you what, um, this is, you see the hotel right now? Yes. Okay. 
I had the video playing the whole time, so I'm sorry. I don't know why I was the only one looking at it. So let me try to figure that out. <laughs> Sharing. Yeah. Um, all right. There it is. Uh, okay. Share the sound as well. It's on mute. Yeah, I'm not sure that I can place the music. While you're, so you might just have to talk over it. So that first property you're looking at here is the Castel Monastero there in Tuscany that we're going to be staying at. It is a converted uh, monastery uh, into a hotel. Uh, this has wonderful accoutrements, uh, spa facilities, pools, fabulous restaurants, very nice rooms, spacious as all get out. Location is just north of Siena and a good location to go into Florence, into Siena, down to Monte, uh, Montalcino, uh, and all parts of Tuscany itself. What I would encourage if you are liking what you see and you want to enjoy some of the services, we will arrange for spa reservations and things like that prior to our departure from the States to make certain that we will have that available on the day you want it. In this area is truffle hunting as well with the dogs. Those are black truffles. We are going to be going up into Pimonte, which will be known for their white truffles by Alba. And that'll be the white truffle festival very close to the time period while we're there. That is a Florentine steak that you just saw. This is their version of the palio. And that gives you a panorama view of the property itself. This will take you on to Ornalaya. We wanted to show you this property. Uh, we have a wonderful opportunity to be the only group there on the day we have planned and the only group having a private luncheon, which we had the last time there outside. And uh, it should be spectacular as it was a few years ago. What we ended up doing for that lunch, which lasted almost three hours, was an opportunity to do a flight of their red wines uh, and ended up with their top Ornelia wines toward the end. And they also produce a fabulous white wine on property that they don't sell anywhere else. And that was a wonderful way to start the lunch. As you can see by the uh, size of the stalks of the, the vines. These are very old vines on property. Very much a clay schist soil. That whole region is very close to also Sasakaya and Solaya as well. So all of these three wines, fabulous in their own right. This will run through here just a few more moments and then we'll move on to Lake Como. So while this is playing, I just wanna mention that uh, this is Jim's production based upon what so many of you on this call and others that can't be on this call have asked for. Uh, this is a blend of 
all three of the areas and we wanted to give you something that is unique that you would not get anywhere else. Uh, by the way, I may also add that today is uh, Pat Bryant's birthday. She turns 80 years young and she looks much younger than her physical age. And she may shoot me for saying this to everybody, but next time you see her, wish her a happy birthday. Now, I hope this will go a little more quickly into Lake Como and uh, share with you some stunning vistas. And what I may also, we are working with the different vineyards that we're gonna be working with to give you the opportunity to purchase wine as well. And then we'll be working with different shippers to ship that wine back to the States as you would like. So we're now in the degustation kitchen of the Grand Hotel Tremezzo, which I mentioned a moment ago was ranked the number one hotel in all of Europe last year. Right across the lake from this property is the town of Bellagio. To give you a perspective, we're up in the northern part of the lake itself. Some of you may have been there before and have stayed at the Villa d'Esta, which is further down to the southern part of the lake. And in between this property and the Villa d'Esta is a movie star's humongous villa, and that's George Clooney and his wife Amal. And don't be surprised that you may see them dining at this restaurant at the Grand Hotel from time to time. Any place that has palm trees up in the mountains has got to be a wonderful place. I don't know how many people uh, are fans of old uh, movies. Uh, but the TCM channel uh, has shown from time to time a movie called The Grand Hotel. And The Grand Hotel was patterned after the Adlan Kapinski Hotel in Berlin. But part of that movie was filmed here on property in what is now known as the Greta Garbo Suite. Because every summer she came here for vacation, stayed at this hotel and stayed in that particular suite and that is so named. And in that suite is where they filmed the boudoir scene in the movie. Uh, you may recognize it in some of the outtakes if you take a look at that movie again. That's Bellagio across the way. At the time of year we're gonna be there, you may even see some snow in the top parts of the mountain already because you're butting up against Switzerland at the northern part of Italy. Hey, Greg, Brian Pollock, remind me, how much downtime do we have in Lake Cuomo to maybe visit some of these? You have, uh, we're going to be getting there toward the afternoon of the first day. So I would say very little that very first day, but all of the next two days is wide open. Thank you. We purposely did not arrange anything during those days that you can take and do everything you would like, including renting the boats and do a cruise, taking the ferry across to Bellagio for shopping, taking walks, doing spa treatments, you name it. The only thing that we have planned right now is a dinner on the first night and a dinner on the second night. But I also want you to enjoy their breakfasts to its fullest. You will come down in the morning and see probably 10 to 12 stations of food of which you can 
gorge to your heart's content if you so wish. But what is nice is make your selection and then go out to the veranda where you're going to eat and you have this panorama view of the entire lake and the mountains. It doesn't get any better than that. This is what I call a classic old line hotel. And to me, it speaks volumes more than the modern ones. That's the lobby area as you come up to the lift from, from the street. And when you come up off the elevator into the lobby, you do not see any reception desk. You see nothing in terms of anything but the grand staircase. And it's only until you get to the grand staircase do you see everything open up in front of you. We are now into Barolo. And what is spectacular about Piemonte is that it was truly formed by volcanic action. So the soil is rich for growing fabulous Nebbiolo-based wines. And that is the basis of Barolo and Barbaresco. Excuse me for saying it that way. Everybody in this call may know it very well, but it's a unique part of Italy that just spoke to my heart the first time I saw it. And to me, it is one of the top wines in all of the world, not just Italy. It's uh, maybe a little difficult to pick out from the air, but what you find are a lot of hillsides spread throughout different valleys, spread throughout the entire region. And it is a, a gorgeous area. <coughs> A lot of the aristocrats growing up, a lot of castles that have been converted over to what you see here in front of you. Why is it in the repository? While we have some quiet time as this is going on, if there are any questions that you would like to raise along the way, please feel free to. Greg, Brian Pollock again, just curious, is Jim on? Jim is not. What's the grape of choice that they use from this area? You said they've got very uh, Nebbiolo grape. grape. Nebbiolo. Say it again? Nebbiolo, Nebbiolo is the grape. It has the same DNA as the Pinot Noir, ironically, but it's a uniquely different taste, much because of the volcanic soil that you're in here right. and the Tuar that... Uh, is pretty unique. All right, we can take that off then, Kim. Let's go back to the uh, PowerPoint. And go to the slideshow itself. at the top here. <laughs> right there. I'm sorry, I'm having a little te technical difficulty here. Getting back to, there we go, okay. You want to back up two screens? Mm -hmm. All right, this is Lake Como here. This is part of uh, the area right around Bellagio, which is right across the, uh, the lake from the Grand Hotel Tremezzo. And I wanted to show you this for another reason. As you can see in the background are the mountains with snow cap, and many of them keep the snow year round. Uh, they may lose it a little bit around uh, the first part of August, but it returns very quickly toward the end of August, beginning of September. Um, why don't you go on, Kim? So this is part of the 
the hotel where we're going to be staying at the Casa de Langa. Uh, it is another virtuoso property. And you can see here the undulating valleys and the hills there. That is a lot of what you'll see in Pimonte itself. We are very close to the town of Alba. Uh, I want to say within 15 minutes from what I've been told from the hotel. And that is a town known for their white truffle festival, which will be spectacular. Uh, that is something that if you have a taste for, you can knock yourself out. This is the place for it. You want to go on, Kim? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give you a perspective of what we're talking about here and why we're having this uh, get together at this point. Uh, <coughs> this is the full tour pricing by tour per person. There's no single supplement. It is $94.50 for Tuscany. It is $38.50 for Lake Como per person and $94.50 per person for Piemonte. Uh, we've gave you or give you the opportunity here to take advantage of one, two, or all three, as I mentioned to you in the beginning. The demand for these properties is the elephant in the room at this moment. We have first option on all of this, but the demand for these properties from other groups is, I, I, I hate to over exaggerate, but it's astronomical at this point that if we don't exercise our option, it's gonna be taken away and the tour is just not going to work to be perfectly blunt. What we are looking for are people to look at this as an opportunity to join us in late September into early October. Uh, the deposit that is due right now is 4,500 per person on or before February 1, which is a week from today. Final payment is due June 1. And we, we set this not that we set it, it was the hotel set it for us. And we needed to give them that commitment by that point in time. That's how much the demand is out there for these properties. We are looking to have 18 people for each one of these tours. That is gonna give us the opportunity to create the experience for you. As I mentioned to you, Jim Bryant is and his wife, Pat, are going to be hosting this. I will be escorting along with my wife, Ursula. This is as close to a all-inclusive three tours as we can make it with some exceptions to give you more downtime. What we are looking to do is the tour is fully non-refundable after June 1, because things will have to be finalized at that point in time. There are some non-refundable portions right now. That's not to penalize you. That is just to be realistic that we're looking for people who are committed to join us. <coughs> Kim, do you wanna to go to the next slide, please? Mm -hmm. So, I purposely wanted to give you more time to ask questions, but before we turn that open and, and Kim, do you want to open up everybody and, and make them unmute? One thing I wanted to mention is that everybody on this tour will be fully vaccinated. That is a requirement. The one part of this full vaccination that is still undetermined is if Italy along with the other EU countries are going to require that besides being fully vaccinated as defined, that they're gonna require a booster shot on top of it. Spain has just implemented that two weeks ago. Italy has not as of this point in time, but we are going through to find out if that is gonna be a requirement at the time of our tour. Wanted to give you that as food for thought. Passports. It will require a valid U.S. passport. And what I mean by that, it's going to need to be not expiring before April of 2023. 
if that is going to be an issue because you're coming up on close to a a passport that is expiring now would be the time to go through the process of getting it extended which would be good for another 10 years vaccination cards if you will be, will be required on your person as we're traveling throughout italy that is more precaution than anything else as many of the museums or restaurants may be requiring that. Travel insurance. At the time of deposit, we are going to give you a proposal for travel insurance. Why? Because there are risks out there with a the non-refundable portion and accidents can happen between now and the time you depart. And we want to be able to protect your investment for any coverable benefit that travel insurance covers. We work with third party carriers that cover you from your house back to your house. I cannot tell you how many challenges we've had with clients over the years. On the way to the airport for their trip, they get into an accident, not of their own making, it happens and they can't travel. You're covered by travel insurance as one example but we strongly encourage that to be considered for ensuring the risk of your trip. So you've heard enough from me. I would love to hear from you. Are there any questions that we can answer on your behalf? On this call is Dee Dee Warner, who is our group person who is handling all of your reservations when they come in. Dee Dee, you may want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Dee Dee. I've spoken with many of you before, but uh, nice to meet those of you who I haven't. And Dee Dee, do you have any question you'd like to perhaps ask? Um, I don't have any question. I do want to mention, though, that. Um, a lot of the countries uh, are offering now a um, phone app type of application for the vaccinations. So you won't, you may not necessarily have to carry the card. It's always good to have it on you, but uh, there are also certainly um, apps that we can put your information onto that you can have with you on your phone as you travel. So that's something that's kind of a nice convenience. So okay. I. I see something in chat here, if I may just interject uh, at this point. Uh, Saul, I'll speak to your question. I know that Kim answered it. And for everybody else on the call, we have recorded or are recording this webinar uh, and we'll give you the link to play back for others, but also the video that we were showing, which would be complete with uh, sound, uh, we can send to you, it's a YouTube clip and we can send that to you, Sal, as well, that you can pass on to others. Let me take a look here on if there's any other questions. Here's another question. Do we have to select a destination if only one at the time of deposit? No, you can, uh, we, we would encourage as, as many as you can at this time, but if it's better for you to have uh, selection of one or two, and you want to add on a third one later on, that can certainly be accommodated by all means. We're trying to make this as flexible for everybody. For all three, you need 11,500 by the 1st of February. Is that correct? Yes. Or as close... I'm, I'm going with this because that's what the hotels have told us. Uh, and who asked the question, may I ask? Steve Pirro. Hi, Steve. Thank you for your question. Uh, Steve, I will clarify that. Right now, that was uh, what they were asking for. And we were going to be speaking with them at the beginning of this coming week. And we can clarify that and get back to you if you would prefer. Uh, we can accept deposits by credit card, by check or cash, whatever you prefer. Did I answer your question? 
Yes, thank you. Were you going to send out a note or we should just assume 11,500? We will send out as a follow-up from this call, Steve, to everybody on the call to have that information. Uh, I don't want to assume anything. I would rather lay it out in terms of being as clear and transparent as possible. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Well, let me ask a question for everybody on the call. How, does the, how do these tours appear to you? Do you like what you see? Is this a repeat of things that you have done before and it really isn't of interest and you're not gonna hurt our feelings, but we are trying and have been trying to produce quality custom product for people that is unique that you don't see anywhere else. And we believe we have achieved this with these tours, a bit out of the ordinary for, for some, but we believe it's something that is appealing to many of our colleagues and constituents. Greg, Jim told me this is his Opus tour. So well, that is what he has said to me as well. Uh, it, it may not be a land tour in the future like this. We may be going back to doing a combination ocean cruise and a pre or post on land. Give you an example of what I'm talking about. <clears throat> We did a uh, segment of the world cruise between New Zealand and Australia. And we had a pre-tour in New Zealand and we did a post-tour in Margaret River in Australia. That is an example of what we have done. We've, we've done also a cruise from Rio de Janeiro down to Buenos Aires. And then we spent a land tour up in Mendoza. We try to enjoy what we have at our disposal. So it is not Jim's last tour, God forbid. It may be just the land, the last land tour to this extent. Well, it looks wonderful. Thank you for putting it together. Thanks, Gary. I'm looking at the time and it's quarter past the hour of five. I certainly want to be respectful of your time. And there's no need, if you don't have any further questions that you can think of at this moment, uh, feel free to email the questions to Dee Dee or Kim or myself, and we will certainly get you the answers right away. We will send you a follow-up link for the webinar so <clears throat> you can share with others. We will send the, the YouTube link for that 12-minute uh, uh, short clip as well, and then we will do a recap information for everybody in terms of the deposit requirement coming up this coming week. And, and I wanna make something very clear if I may, because uh, I would be remiss if I didn't. There is a large re non-refundable part of this deposit and it's not meant to be mean spirited. <clears throat> it's what the hotels are, are really requiring to ensure the commitment. If we don't get our 18. If the country of Italy shuts down due to the, another variant that is going rampant, heaven forbid all of that, we will refund all of your deposit, less a very nominal administrative charge, but that's it. We are not into collecting remuneration for services not rendered. We are not in the business of doing transactions. We are in the business of creating relations. And that is what we pride ourselves on. We wouldn't be here for 30 years as a company if it wasn't for that fact. Greg, Brian Pollack, uh, they are fully, Italy is fully open at this point in time? Fully open. Actually, Europe is fully open at this time. There may be some caveats for coming into any particular country, like a booster requirement for Spain, 
but there is, it's wide open for Italy at this point, and we monitor it on a weekly basis. Thank you. Greg, based on what you know now, do you have the people for each leg of the tour? We believe so, uh, but it's, it's easy to say we believe so until the deposits start to be received. We are planning for this to be fully subscribed. And if you have others, friends that you travel with, <coughs> whether it's true friends or family members that would like to join you, feel free to share the information. At this point, we have a blank slate and would love to accommodate everybody's requests. Greg, just to clarify, 18 minimum, or could that number go above 18? Could go above. Okay, thank you. And, and to what extent above, I, I couldn't tell you at this point, we would need then to re-verify with the different uh, wineries that may have some capacity constraints. We don't believe there are any at this moment, but we would out of courtesy, just double check that. Smaller is better. Mm -hmm. We try to keep these, uh, I, I just heard the comment and I, I tend to agree. We try to keep these groups, uh, I'll use the term intimate in the sense that it's large enough for people to get to know each other and small enough to enjoy each other's company as well as enjoy the accommodations, enjoy the restaurants, enjoy the wineries fully. So one last call for questions. If not, then what I'm going to wish everybody a, a wonderful rest of your afternoon and your evening. And we look forward to working with all of you. And quite frankly, I'm looking forward to joining all of you in Italy. It's gonna be a fabulous experience. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. So everybody, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate that. We appreciate your questions. We will get you the information. And our whole team is here to answer your further questions and handle everything that you need to make this trip a reality for you. So everybody, on that note, I will bid you adieu. Ciao. And all I can Greg, say is thank you. The best is yet to come. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Greg, thanks for putting this together. My pleasure. Right. Bye, Bye for now.